Okay, so the final part of running through a simulation is doing some analysis at the end. And here is um, where you talk about the assumptions that you made. Now we're doing this for the Magnum problem still. Um, so this was, he had an 80% chance of deciding the day was hot enough to buy a Magnum and one in six Magnums uh, won you a free one printed on the lolly stick. Okay, so the first assumption we've got is that those probabilities remain constant, that uh, he will always um, have an 80% chance of buying a Magnum and a 1 in 6 chance of getting a, a winning stick. This means that we can generate the simulation that we did um, in the way that we did it so that we had the 80% chance of getting the numbers that we wanted each time or the 1 in 6 chance from the rolling the dice. Okay, Jordan will always have the money to buy one. That's an assumption that we're making, that 80% of the time he decides to uh, buy the Magnum, that he actually will have the money to be able to do that every time he decides to buy one. This means that we don't have to factor that into our simulation. The winning sticks are fairly and randomly distributed, again, so that we can assume that that one in six chance stays true for um, every time that he buys a Magnum. And then we have to consider what would happen if those um, assumptions weren't actually true? How would it change our results? So the first one, if the probabilities weren't constant, then it would affect our results. If, for example, if um, he was affected by the weather on the day, so he had a, a lower chance of actually buying a Magnum, then it would reduce his chances of winning and vice versa. Um, if he didn't always have the money to buy one, the results of our simulation would be overestimating how often he would win because with less money um, with and buying less magnums obviously the chance of him buy, uh, getting a winning stick will go down. Um, the winning sticks are fairly and randomly distributed so he has a, a equal chance, a one in six chances was stated in the problem um, but if this wasn't true he could either be, have more chance or less chance. So if they weren't fairly distributed, if it was that um, the place that he bought them from didn't get as many of the winning, stick at, w winning sticks as had been promoted, then he would have a lower chance. But also if they got more of the winning magnums um, than had been stated in the promotion, then he would have a better chance of winning. Then you look at your variation in the results. So you look down your table and you see, were there any days where he had to only buy just a, a, a small number of magnums um, before getting a winning stick? Or were there some that he had to buy a lot of magnums? And you can talk about the variation that's in your results. So you estimate this, these are his chances but sometimes it would be more, sometimes it would be less. You might give a range of values that he wants to um, kind of fit in the middle of. You'd also discuss sampling variability. So if you did this again, would you expect exactly the same results? Probably not, but you'd probably expect something similar. Or if somebody else ran that simulation, you would expect them to have some slightly different results, but probably get some similar averages and calculations. And then finally, you'd look at ways that you could improve that simulation. Is there something that you could do better? Um, is there any, any way that you could improve the assumptions that you're not too sure about or improve the model that you, you were using for simulating?